Thank you, uh, Mr. Secretary General and Ambassador Lewis, who invited me here, and, and all of you. Uh, I think uh, this, is a, this is the kind of audience that I'm used to after 30 years in New York City high schools. And because of my 30 years as a teacher in New York City high schools, I know what you're thinking. And it's not about politics. It's not about religion. It's not about anything. You're just hungry. And you, I think you received, I, th I think you received a, a, a handbook, a program, and you notice one page has listed all the restaurants in this area. You have Orca, you have Italian, you have Japanese, you have, you have Middle Eastern, you have, you're going to have your baba ganoush and your hummus, and you're going to have your sushi and spaghetti and meatballs. It's all waiting for you. But try to keep your mind off that for a few minutes <laughs> while I speak to you of higher, more spiritual things. Because you, many of you are going to graduate in uh, this month or next month. Uh, in where, where, go ahead, applaud yourself. <laughs> you deserve it. And uh, you're going to have graduation ceremonies. They call them commencements. And at those commencements, there will be speakers, distinguished people and famous people athletes and politicians and clergymen and so on, and they would speak to you. And it, they'll give you all kinds of advice. Oscar Wilde said the best thing to do with advice is to pass it on to somebody else. <laughs> it's of no use to yourself. But they'll give you advice of all kinds. They'll tell you how to conduct your life. They'll tell you what to believe. And they'll talk about equality and so on and government and the rest of it. And then at the, end of, at the end of the speech, they'll say, and now, graduates, they always say this, go forth. What the hell does that mean? <laughs> of course you'll go forth. You're not going to hang around the school for the rest of your life. <laughs> because on, on commencement day, it's usually in the morning, and you have business you have to get on with your life. You'll be nice to your parents. You might have breakfast with them. You'll be, it's very kind of you to have breakfast with your parents who work so hard to put you through high school and now breaking their backs to send you to college. It's very nice of you. But have breakfast with them because you have other plans for lunch. And usually it has to do with some kind of a romance. <laughs> You're in love. You're 17 or 18, and you have to meet her or him. So you will go forth. You'll follow the advice of the speaker. Other speakers, after saying, after saying go forth, will say, go forth. We give you the world. That's very generous of them. <laughs> Except my generation, and the generation behind me, the baby boomers, are not finished with the world. It isn't yours yet. So don't go grabbing it. <laughs> We're not finished. As the Secretary General told you and other speakers, there are things that we have to fix. We have to put Band-Aid on the world. There is disaster everywhere. There's hunger, there's starvation, and people are killing each other for one reason or another. And uh, I, I'm afraid a lot of that is going to be dropped in your lap. So you might as well get ready for it. And how do you get ready for it? Well, I suppose you, you will go forth from, from high school, and you'll go to the university or the college, and you have four more years of, of education there, where I hope they encourage you to think for yourself. That's the main thing. When I grew up in Ireland, that was discouraged. Oh, you were not to think for yourself, because the government knew everything. And certainly, if the government didn't know it, the church knew it. So if you, if you started thinking for yourself, that was almost a sin. And you'll find that even nowadays, you might be born into a Jewish family, Catholic family, Muslim family, and so on. Uh, you might be born into a Republican and uh, uh, Democratic family in, the, family in this country. And this is the set of circumstances and religions that you'll inherit. And you might start asking questions later on. We were discouraged from asking questions. We could never raise our hands in class and say, what, what, how could there be, how could, 
how could there be a virgin having a baby? <laughs> they'd, they'd cut your hand off. <laughs> you were not to ask any questions like this. And the other, the other pillar of Irish education was all the things that were wrong in Ireland could be directly attributed to the English. They, they occupied our country for 800 years. They took our language away from us. A few people still speak it. And they tried to impose that other religion on us, the Protestant religion of King Henry VIII and Martin Luther and people like that. We resisted. We remained a Catholic country. Though sometimes I wonder, sometimes I think I'd like to have been a Protestant. Because I don't think they were so anxious or nervous about people asking questions. So all of the, I grew up with all of this in Ireland, and I came over here, and I found this strange situation. I went to school here to New York University for four years to become a teacher, and I found, I found myself a bit dazzled by the atmosphere. Uh, in a class, you were encouraged to raise your hand and ask questions. I, hardly, I forgot what a question looked like, and I was almost afraid to ask questions, but all the time, and this happens to all of you, to all of us, at the back of your mind, there are always questions. The questions and dreams. I think they're all in there. Sometimes it's more dreams than questions. Sometimes it's more questions than dreams. But it's all in there. And I think that's the purpose of, of education, helping you to sort this out. If you have good, wise, patient, compassionate, scholarly teachers, that their job is to help you. I spent my, my 30 years in the classrooms of New York City, and if I know anything, that's where I learned it. I didn't learn it in classrooms at NYU. I didn't learn it, I learned a lot in the streets of New York, or the streets of Ireland. I learned a lot of, uh, you know, mundane stuff, but uh, whatever I know about life, I learned from my approximately 12,000 students over the course of 30 years. That was my university in four different high schools in New York City. And I also learned, and I was a very slow learner because of my lack of education in Ireland. I also learned that the main thing is learning because nobody knows anything. If we knew anything, the world wouldn't be in the awful state it is in. We don't know anything. Why? Why we have educated people in every country. Why are countries so stupid? <laughs> and I hope, I hope, I hope because of, of, of your, your experience here and all the people you meet here, people from diverse backgrounds, some of them completely opposed to what you think or feel. I hope this rubs up on some of you because the greatest fear of all, I think, and I know this from going up growing up in Ireland and being exposed later on to other religions and other politics. The great fear of all is to look, the greatest fear of all is to look at the two sides of a story. Just to look, to, to, to try to be objective and entertain the point of view and the feelings of, of other people. Beyond that, I realized after my 30 years of teaching, there was one dream I had, one main dream, and that was to write. I did my 30 years in the classroom, and that was fine. I hope I helped my students. They certainly helped me. But I had this dream all the time of being a writer because I thought that was the most divine uh, occupation in the world. Others of you would be doctors and lawyers and dentists and plumbers and so on, but I, I wanted to be a writer. So I finished my 30 years of teaching, and on the last day of my teaching career, uh, the students knew that I was leaving, and they threw confetti all over me. And it was covered with all these colors, rain, like, like a rainbow. And one of the last things one of them said, Mr. McCor, you know, you should write a book. And I do what I'm told, and I did. Thank you. Yeah. One question.